top of that, on top of that, with, with everything into account, and yes, obviously the Atlanta Falcons made mistakes. You said you were impressed with Jalen Hurts. How impressed were you with Jalen Hurts? And what really impressed you about this game by this young quarterback? Well, I, I would say the poise. Uh, Nick Sirianni, first first time signal caller, first time head coach. You know, first first head coach win as a head coach. Uh, they had a game plan. They kept it simple. And as you saw the game progressed, he got more and more comfortable, and they allowed him to throw the ball down the field. Because early on, Mark, he was taking what the defense was giving him. You know, and he was making play. He was the offense initially in the first half. He was all the Eagles offense. And once he got comfortable, then that's when they let him fly. They let him do his thing. And and to be honest, you know, I always say it takes at least four games to see what a young quarterback is. And his four games was last year. The leap to me that he's taken in that short period of time and, and that and that small window was pretty phenomenal. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I know there's a lot of football left to be played. But I'm excited about this young man's upside. And I got to eat a lot of crow today, if you want to say. Eagle, falcon, whatever it is. I got to eat that today because <laughs> I was totally wrong about this young man. I was impressed. I really was impressed. I, I will say, the fact that you you said poise is what kind of led off for you about what was impressive about him. I, I mean, so many times we were looking at Carson Wentz waiting for the mistake. So many times we're waiting for the errant throw, the fumble, the, the bad decision to try to go for the extra yard, and then he fumbles, or not throwing the football away and taking the bad sack. There were multiple times, and if you remember, there was that big play, that fourth down attempt, the first fourth down attempt the Eagles attempt tried there. Uh, Jalen Hurts scrambled far to his right. He had the uh, defensive lineman on his, uh, on his tail. Brady okay. yeah. And he's rolling at his right. I thought he was going to run out of bounds and give the ball over to the Falcons at midfield, and at the last second, he hesitated he and – and he threw it, away. He threw it that, away. I'm so glad you said poise. Yeah, I mean, and man, listen, the guy, I had a chance to see the guys before the game, you know, went and, and you know, chopped it up, had a chance to talk to Brandon Graham. And, you know, I just asked him, hey, are you guys ready? And to a man, man, they looked at me, and they, as soon as I said it, their eyes lit up, and it made me want to play defense <laughs> because those guys were ready to go. They were like, this guy's a statue back here. We about to get after him. And they did. <laughs> They did. And then at the end when they had the choreographed dance where they, I guess they were kicking in the door or whatever. Oh man, I thought that was the coolest thing. I thought that was the coolest thing that I've seen in a while. I mean, <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. I'm a little torn because I picked the Falcons to win this game. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was riding with the Falcons because like I said, I was misled into believing that it was going to be different. And like I told you, it I could have closed my eyes, Mark, and I swear that that was a Dan Quinn coach defense out there that I saw. <laughs> it was ridiculous. All right. Well, first off, I'm glad you said that you wanted to suit up because I think the Eagles could have used you on that defensive line in the first half because you guys were running the football all over. I, I'm sorry. I just said you guys. I just put you with the Falcons. No, you uh, have to I mean, hell, I can't come back to Philadelphia for a while. Anyway. <laughs> I can't because you you can't imagine what my timeline looks like. <laughs> people ridiculing me for making that pick. And saying that stupid stuff that came out of my mouth about that that Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, excuse me, that Atlanta Falcons defense, because you know what? I sold a bunch of wolf tickets. Oh, they got oh they they got a bunch of guys up front. They're gonna bring some pressure. They got one sack. Mm. They got one sack. So you know, I, I mean, I deserve it. But the good thing about this is there's a game next week, <laughs> and and I, I I expect I'm gonna get ridiculed. At least to Wednesday, maybe Thursday, I'll have some residual hangovers. Wow. After that, and yeah. it's on to the next one. Um, yeah, I was one of the people doing the ridiculing, but only because you put the tweet out about you being sold a bill of goods, and I couldn't help but sending you the, the Cartman tweet. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I deserve that. Listen, I was in my feelings yesterday mm. a lot because I like looking at it, looking at it live, watching it go down. I was like, wow, this is not how I thought this was going to play out. I at least knew that for the most part, you were going to make Jalen Hurts beat you from the pocket. Not saying that he can't throw the ball, mm. but when you talk about a young quarterback and you have a 14-year veteran on the other side, you would think that you're going to do everything you possibly can to make this young man uncomfortable. Now, granted, they blitzed him a little bit, and if it would have been any other quarterback, they probably would have got to him. But they didn't, and he was able to make plays. He was able to extend plays. He played well, man. He played extremely well. Um, 
Uh, did the, did you tell Brandon Graham and, and the boys while you were chopping up there with them pregame, your word's not mine? Did you tell them you happened to pick the Falcons? Yes, I did. I mean, oh, I, you did? I, oh. Yeah, I didn't hide that fact. I, like, listen, Mark, I keep you 100. Oh, I know. I and know. I said, you know, I picked up. And, and, and you know what? Brandon was like, I said, I picked the Falcons because of the quarterback play. He said, I understand. And then that's when they did, did, proceeded to get after his ass. <laughs> so, you know. But but still, I mean, he knew that. L- listen, Brandon's a savvy vet. Fletcher Cox is a savvy vet. They knew how this game was going to go, and they played like it. They did everything possible to help their young quarterback out. They did that, mm-hmm. and they did. I-, I commend them. My hats off to them. Fly Eagles, fly all of that because they did exactly what you're supposed to do as a defender. You're supposed to put your quarterback in the best possible position that you possibly can. Six points. They gave up six points yesterday. <sighs> And somebody had the nerve to tell me, like, listen, nobody in Atlanta likes Matt Ryan. I mean, that's just a fact. And a lot of people are laying this blame at the feet of Matt Ryan. Now, he has some blame for for the way that they played, but not all the blame. 32 points, 32 points that you gave up. The norm when I played was 17. Like, that's the most you could give up and expect in a football game is 17 points. So if you want to blame Matt Ryan because you don't like Matt Ryan and things like that, yes, he ha- he is partly to blame. But uh, I could blame Jalen Mayfield for that. I could blame the offensive line. I could blame the play calling. Hell, I could blame the stupid-ass penalties that the receivers got in key situations. But defensively, you gave up 32 points. That like That's supposed to be the bread and butter of any football team going into the season. You look at the way defenses play early on, they're supposed to be ahead of offense. They're supposed to be flying around. They're supposed to be salty. There was only one salty defense on the field yesterday, and they were wearing green. They were wearing green. That was the only salty defense that I saw yesterday. You you didn't happen to get a chance to meet Jalen uh, Hurts, did you? I saw him. I got a chance to see, and I uh, didn't get a chance to meet him because it was, it was kind of quick, and I could tell the young man was focused. The mm-hmm. young man was focused, so he was he was doing his thing. So they get a chance to meet him. I got to tell you this one thing, in case you didn't see it after the game. Jalen Hurts got asked in a, in the press conference afterwards about things being called to fit his skill set, and I have I never thought about it like this ever, but I've never seen someone look insulted when you asked the legit question of things being catered to their skill set because his response was. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about when it really comes to skill set, but I just try to execute the play that's called. Like, like it was like, don't put me in a box of being this specific type of quarterback that they can only do th- these handful of plays. I'm a quarterback. I'll well, play I, that I, position. I'll say this, Mark. I understand where he's coming from because, because he wants to be more than what he is right now, and that's great. I, I commend him for that because that means that that he's he's striving to be better. But early on, when you look at the handful of plays, the RPOs, the rollouts, and things of that nature, that was designed for him to have success early and get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And once he did, then you saw in the second half him become more of a quarterback and throw the ball down the field and take chances with the football. So I totally understand where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you here to a man, my opinion of Jalen Hurst has changed drastically over a six-day period. I mean, it really, really has. It really, really has. Don't laugh at me. I'm not...